Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm Lauren. I am Ken. And this is Paradise After Dark. Dark, dark, dark. This episode that you're about to listen to was first recorded and released last year in November 2019. Since the release of this episode, we've had the opportunity to speak with Joshua Duckett, who is Trenton Duckett's father. Part two of this series is our interview with Josh. We're re-releasing this episode as a refresher to you to listen to before you hear our conversation with Josh Duckett. Morning. An Amber Alert is out for this two-year-old boy who was missing from Leesburg. Trenton Duckett's mother reported him missing last night from their home. In the 21 years I've been here, we've never been looking at anything like, uh, like a potential abduction type case uh, where it may be a stranger. We've had uh, parent involvement, parent interference, uh, other domestic type situations. And obviously we're looking at all angles in this case um, and we just want to get Trenton home safe. West 2 News was first to bring you information that a second witness, a second worker at a Marion County Wendy's restaurant, saw Trenton Duckett alive the day he disappeared. We are live at Team Trenton headquarters here at Leesburg, Florida. After Nancy Grace's show on Trenton Duckett's case aired, authorities said they received as many as 100 tips and leads from around the country. It was a tip that came from a psychic out of state. Search for missing toddler Trenton Duckett. Today, Leesburg police revealed there is no evidence showing anybody abducted Duckett back on August 26th of last year. Police also say there's no evidence showing Duckett has been handed off to anybody else, either in this area or around the globe. They think his mother, Melinda, did something to her son. And even after her suicide, she's still being called the prime suspect in his disappearance. Duckett was the mother of missing two-year-old Trenton Duckett, who had disappeared from his bedroom that August. Why aren't you telling us and giving us a clear picture where you were before your son was kidnapped? Because I'm not going to put those kind of details out. Why? Because I was told not to. Grace continued to press Duckett, at one point hinting she was hiding something. Miss Duckett, you're not telling us for a reason. Duckett committed suicide the very next day. Welcome. I'm Lauren. I am Ken. This is Paradise After Dark. Dark, 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 dark. Paradise After Dark is a bi-weekly podcast covering true crime, unsolved mysteries, missing people, urban legends, and the dark side of the Sunshine State. This week we are discussing the disappearance of two-year-old Trenton Duckett from yeah. Leesburg, Florida. Very sad story. Yeah. All the way around. Mm-hmm. So but first, um, if you would like to support our show, please subscribe at Patreon dot com backslash paradise after dark podcast yes and we have a new patron audrey oh yes thank you audrey audrey coming in at the urban legend level thank you thank you thank you and just so everyone knows we are a grassroots operation research written directed and produced by us us. so again if you'd like to support the show please subscribe at patreon.com backslash paradise after dark podcast Now back to the show. On August 27th of 2006, a few weeks after his second birthday, Trenton Duckett vanished from his bedroom in his mother's home at the Windermere Villas apartment complex in Leesburg, Florida. His 21-year-old mother, Melinda Duckett, said she had checked on her son around 7 p.m. that evening, then went in the living room and watched a movie with some friends. After the movie, she went to check on him again, and he was gone. She dialed 911 around 9 p.m. that night. When police arrived, Melinda pointed out that the bedroom window screen in Trenton's room had been cut. An Amber Alert was immediately issued, and bloodhounds called in to assist in the search, but nothing was found. To this day, Trenton Duckett remains missing. All right, so let's look at the background. Trenton Duckett was born August 10, 2004, to Melinda Eubanks and Joshua Duckett. His mother, Melinda, was born in South Korea and moved to the United States in 1985 at the age of four months after being adopted by an American couple. After growing up in upstate New York with her adoptive parents, she moved down to Florida to live with her grandparents when she was a teenager. She began dating Josh Duckett in high school when the two met at an ice cream parlor. In her senior year, Melinda became pregnant with Trenton, who was born just after her graduation in 2004. 
Melinda had a rocky life growing up. She was supposedly abused as a child by her adoptive parents. In an interview with a child protection investigator, Melinda's grandmother, Nancy Eubank, said Melinda was mistreated in New York and that she and her husband, Bill Eubank, Melinda's grandfather, became Melinda's legal guardians at age 17 when she left her home and adoptive parents in Lockport, New York, according to an article on Ocala.com. In the same article, they state, In another interview in April of 2005, Joshua Duckett told child protection investigators that he had heard Melinda was institutionalized in New York and that Melinda told him her parents abused her in New York and that the family services in that state got involved. Melinda later denied any trauma, loss, or abuse. Now, a couple more facts about Melinda that may or may not be related to this case. For two years prior to Trenton's disappearance, she'd been filming pornographic videos of herself and selling them to an out-of-state website. Police found naked photos of Melinda and sexually explicit videos in which a crying baby can be heard in the background. She was studying criminal psychology at Lake Sumter Community College at the time Trenton disappeared, and she was also being investigated for embezzling thousands of dollars from the bank where she worked. So she w- she was not looking real good right at the moment. Not great. Well, I guess it surrounds you, the company you keep. Now, Trenton's father, Joshua Duckett, is the son of James Duckett. Now, he's a former police officer who is currently on death row after being convicted of raping and strangling an 11-year-old girl in 1987. Now, his mother, Joshua's mother, Carla Macero had a very rocky relationship with Melinda from the start. She and her son Josh had an unusually close relationship, which I always find those real weird. Mm -hmm. Um, But there were rumors that she was threatening to take custody of Trenton before he was even born. And she also accused Melinda of arson when her flower shop burned down in April of 2005. On August 5th of 2005, Joshua Duckett files a request for a restraining order against his own mother for harassment and bullying, and for enlisting numerous people to carry out the harassment against both Josh and Melinda. So it's just not good. That's a whole, that's Mm -hmm. some bad juju there with mom. Now, at one point, Carla Macero sent several emails to the governor's office saying Melinda was unstable and prone to violence and self-mutilation. So she's on like a campaign against Melinda. I mean, yeah, if you're taking, you hate someone so much that you're willing to write a letter to the governor. (laughs) I mean, not. Because I, I, I've, I've been angry with some people before, but I've never taken the initiative to write to the governor, talk about how much I didn't like him. I wonder That's, if that would really get you anywhere. I don't think it would probably even hit the governor's desk. I'm sure there's people that <laughs> filter that stuff. But I, I, mean, I guess, I mean, it, why would you write to the governor and not, and maybe she did too, maybe she was writing everybody, but anyway. So the couple married in July of 2005, one month before Trenton's first birthday, and lived together in Bushnell, Florida. But the marriage was obviously rocky from the start. According to police records, authorities had to visit the couple to break up arguments on several occasions. In April of that year, Melinda was committed for psychiatric observation by Bushnell police after the police chief overheard her threatening to end it during a cell phone conversation with Josh. Melinda had also threatened to harm Trenton unless Josh went to her home to talk to her. The report alleges that Melinda had scars on her arms from cutting herself and squeezed Trenton so so tight that he screamed. She also allegedly dangled Trenton over water to provoke Josh. She was released from the facility the next day after they determined she was not a danger to herself or others. Now, how could they determine that? I guess they do an evaluation... And, well, she was obviously Baker acted. And when you're Baker acted, that means that they can involuntarily commit you for up to 72 hours. Okay. But if, like, they say that they think that someone is a danger to themselves or others, they'll go ahead and Baker act first, and then they'll do an evaluation to determine what the case is. And if they find that they're not, a danger, they'll let them go. Okay, so she was taken in, not necessarily Baker Act, but she was taken in, released the next day, 
because they did the evaluation. She was Baker acted. Oh, okay. Yeah, she was but Baker acted. But after the evaluation, then... They decided that she wasn't a danger, so they let her out the next day. Okay, but see, this because it was alleged that he, Josh basically said this is what she did, correct? Well, a police officer overheard her threatening to end it. Ah, okay, yeah, that's right. You're right. So Josh alleged that Melinda was abusing Trenton, but then recanted and signed an affidavit saying he made it all up. On October 31st of 2005, Josh and Melinda got into a fight in the parking lot of an Ocoee mall. DCF received a report from Lake County that said Melinda scratched Josh during an argument in the car. She is also alleged to have threatened to kill Trenton and held a knife against his leg. Afterward, Trenton was briefly placed in foster care. He was later placed with his great-grandmother, Nancy Eubank. The DCF records also report that Melinda had a psychological evaluation in December of 2005, and she was diagnosed with obsessive-compulsive personality disorder. But entry after entry indicated that there was no psychological reason that would preclude Melinda from being a capable and loving parent. Except for the fact that she's constantly have to take evaluation tests. In June 2006, Melinda Duckett filed for divorce. In July 2006, Melinda was granted a temporary restraining order against Josh and custody of Trenton. This blows my mind. Josh had allegedly sent Melinda a threatening MySpace message in which he threatened to kill her and their son. Okay. Can, you want to talk about the night Trenton disappeared? Mm-hmm. All right. So let's talk about that for a minute. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Melinda told police that she had put Trenton to bed at 7 p.m. that evening and then went to watch a movie in the living room with two male friends. Now, the two male friends who were there with Melinda that night have been 100% cleared by police and play no part in the story at all, other than the fact that both told police they did not see Trenton on that evening, so they will not be named. So they were there. They know they were there. And yet... She she had two... Friends over. And neither one of those claimed to have even seen him there that night. Yeah, but she claimed she put the, him to bed before they got there. and Okay. But yeah, they, they have no recollection of even seeing it. So I don't think we... We don't have any names of these people at all. They, no. Their names have been withheld, correct? Well, their names are out there, but we're not going to name the names. Okay. I thought the police had withheld their names. Well, I found the names. Okay. Of course you found <laughs> the names. But anyway. So anyway, well, when the movie ended... It was around 9 p.m., and she went to check on Trenton, and he was gone. Now, according to an article in the Seattle Times, an unidentified man reported the toddler's disappearance 911. Melinda Duckett's son is missing, the man calmly told a dispatcher. He was in the bed sleeping. She went in to check on him, and he was not there. The dispatcher then asked to speak with Duckett, and the man can be heard calling her name three times. She then comes to the phone, panting, out of breath, and the dispatcher asks her what her son was wearing, I don't know. He was ready for bed, she said, breathing heavily. Um, He might have had his shoes off, his shirt off. He had a pair of jean shorts. He's only two years old. So she then tells the dispatcher, I was watching a movie that was two hours long. I had checked on him before anyone came down to the house. And now I guess they found that the window screen in the bedroom had been cut into like a U shape. Mm -hmm. So the screen is cut open and... Which obviously looks like somebody broke in. About 100 officers and several bloodhounds from half a dozen Central Florida agencies again searched the Windermere Villa's apartment complex the following day. Officials issued an Amber Alert early that Monday morning, the day after Trenton went missing. Officers obtained a search warrant for the apartment of Trenton's mother, Melinda, within 24 hours of the boy's disappearance. Items taken from... Melinda's apartment include a laptop computer, several photo albums, cassette tapes, and a gun cleaning kit, according to an inventory of the search filed with the Lake County Clerk of Courts. A gl- gun cleaning kit? Mm-hmm. Police and investigators from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement spent that day interviewing the boy's family and friends. According to an article in the Orlando Sentinel titled, Toddler's Whereabouts Still a Mystery, Neighbors said they didn't see much of Trenton Duckett before he disappeared. The toddler rarely played on the slide in front of the Windermere Villa's apartments, they said. In fact, some people living in the same courtyard said they had never seen the two-year-old boy until police handed out flyers with his face on them. On the fourth day spent searching for the boy, neighbors said 
they were as baffled as investigators by the toddler's disappearance. Information about Trenton's disappearance aired briefly on the following Saturday night on the television show America's Most Wanted. Joshua Duckett, who hadn't even seen his son Trenton since June of 2006, pleaded with the public to help find Trenton. I mean, he was being very, he was very compassionate. He was sad. He was upset. So he was basically pleading with everyone, hey, help find my child. And Josh said their relatives and friends passed out more than 5,000 flyers with photos and information about Trenton throughout the state and went as far north as South Carolina. And Duckett said at a press conference held at City Hall on Tuesday, September 5th, 2006, he is trying everything to bring two-year-old Trenton home. He described his son as a ball of joy who was always bouncing off the walls. We've made ourselves fully available to them, speaking about the police, 24 hours a day, he said, referring to himself and his family. And Josh Duckett said Tuesday that he had taken a polygraph test. He didn't know the exact results, he said, but added that investigators response was favorable. Melinda Duckett did not attend the press conference at City Hall that day, and she also refused to take a polygraph. Within days of Trenton Duckett's reported disappearance August 27th, investigators found toys as well as photographs of the two-year-old, including his sonogram image, in a dumpster at his mother's apartment complex, according to law enforcement officials. Who throws that away? I don't know. One source told the Orlando Sentinel that police also found freshly painted walls when they searched Melinda's apartment. It was also said that although the window screen in Trenton's room was cut, there were no fingerprints on the window and no disturbances on the ground below the window, something police would have expected if someone had come in and out. Melinda's grandmother, Nancy Eubanks, told authorities that Melinda and Trenton were with her all day on August 26th the day before he went missing. But police were having a hard time piecing together where they were from 4 p.m. on August 26 until the 911 call at 9 p.m. on the 27th. Leesburg Police Captain Steve Rockefeller said investigators consider the mother's and the child's whereabouts iffy on those two days and asked that anyone who saw them during this time please come forward to talk to police. It was later learned that the hours before the son was reported missing, Melinda packed up Trenton, his diaper bag, and her new shotgun and headed north to Ocala National Forest. She told her attorney that she had planned target practice but couldn't find the massive forest rifle range. So she's going to take her son shooting. Target shooting with yeah. a shotgun. Exactly. Genius. You don't really target shoot with a shotgun, people. <laughs> you just kind of shoot one. Then she drove around Central Florida in an eight-hour odyssey, according to another article from the Orlando Sentinel, going from Interstate 75 to Florida's Turnpike to Altamonte Mall, where she said she changed Trenton's diaper outside Sears, then went to TD Waterhouse Center in Orlando, which is currently named Amway Arena. Finally, she spotted signs for U.S. Highway 441 and headed home to Leesburg, but two other sightings placed her alone in Leesburg that day. So two other places she went to, people saw her, but never saw Trenton. Nonetheless, investigators started searching the Ocala National Forest, this time using cadaver dogs, and divers were aided with sonar in their probe of the murky waters, but they came up empty. The discoveries in the trash, Melinda's reluctance to cooperate with investigators, and her sketchy story about where she was on that day led authorities to look more closely in the young mother's direction from early on in the investigation, said the sources familiar with the case. Police would later say that they had cause to arrest Melinda four days after Trenton disappeared but chose not to. Investigators began following Melinda and considered using other surveillance techniques, hoping that she would lead them to the boy. Well, that's a, that's a smart tactic to use. I mean, right. cause it, if, if he's missing and we don't know where he is or what happened... If she did know, she might return. Return. Because they, they say that, that that happens. Mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, on August 31st, after seizing Melinda's computer, investigators discovered that the threatening MySpace message that Josh supposedly sent to Melinda back in July, prompting the judge to order a restraining order against Josh, was actually written by Melinda after she hacked into Josh's MySpace account. Ooh, not good. 
so she could have been arrested and charged for that. Rockefeller said police hid their findings from Melinda Duckett, but drafted a charging document that could have been signed quickly by a judge and used to arrest her in case she tried to flee. So this is one of those scenarios where they 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 had they could go arrest her, but they were holding off. Maybe were they were they still hoping that she would lead them to maybe where Trenton was? Right. Yep. So I mean, do you, do you feel like that's why they held out on this? Yes, I think I think that's exactly why they held on out on it. Because mm-hmm. if she had handed him off to someone, which is one of the theories, she may have wanted to see him. Okay. So they were kind of like following her. They had surveillance on her. Or if she had done something to him. Maybe like if, if it, she had murdered him or killed him and buried the body somewhere or left him somewhere. She may have returned okay. to move it or check on it or anything along those lines. But also I kind of want to, um, I think that this MySpace thing is kind of important because if you think back to what we just said about they were going through a rocky divorce and they were fighting over custody of Trenton. Now that is a pretty sneaky, sly, slimy, snaky kind of thing to do back in the MySpace days, remember? Yep. She hacked into his account and sent him a message, sent herself a message from his account with all these threats saying that he was going to kill her and kill their son, and that's what gave her the restraining order and full custody of Trenton to begin with. So she was going to great lengths to keep him away from her son. Yeah. I mean, that just, I think that that's worth not just skimming over. I think that we need to make that clear that she's going to great lengths asking for restraining orders, trying to get full custody. So it's almost like she, I mean, lying she and manipulating just to keep him away from her son. Yeah, because when you're hacking into someone's, I mean, this is not something that she just decided, oh, you know, I have a good idea. This almost seems like it was a, a, a complete manipulation. She oh, was, yeah. you know, forethought what do they call it pre-planned or exactly so, all right well speaking of things that are really important to this case obviously this is very important to this case mm-hmm. um and this like i said a very important part of the story it's cnn's nancy grace devoted her hour-long show to the search for trenton which you know she gets involved in these things now the show was taped on september 7th the day before it aired and Melinda appeared by phone on the show where Nancy Grace grilled her on many different topics. And we all know how Nancy Grace can get when she gets her mindset. She's like a dog with a bone. And Nancy Grace pushed Melinda on where she was the day Trent went missing, why she wouldn't take a polygraph, and why she wasn't cooperating with the police. And while the actual video of Nancy Grace grilling Melinda is no longer available, I was able to find a few clips to put together. Can we... Insert those somehow? Yep. Okay. Inserting right now. Where were you? Why aren't you telling us where you were that day? You were the last person to be seen with him. And we've already gone out and distributed the flyers. And spoke right. To- Why aren't you telling us and giving us a clear picture of where you were before your son was kidnapped? Because I'm not going to put those kind of details out. Why? Because I was told not to. Miss Duckett, you're not telling us for a reason. What is the reason? You refuse to give him the simplest facts of where you were with your son before he went missing. It is day 12. With all media. It's not just there. It's with all media, period. So on September 8th, 2006, Melinda Duckett was found dead from an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head in the closet at her grandparents' home. She wrote a suicide note to her parents and grandparents. She also wrote a letter addressed to the public, expressing her love for Trenton and anger over being faced with ridicule and criticism. Now here's an excerpt from her letter. It says, public, I'm sorry this is short. Usually I plan things out and am better with my writing. Your focus came off my son. I love him and wanted him safe in my arms. You created rumors and twisted words. Usually I am strong and what others say does not affect me. However, I am young, have worked my ass off, and still being faced with ridicule and criticism. I only wish that you do not push anyone else. I do not bleed my emotions to the public, and throughout this situation, you did not understand that. 
There were many more errors made in understanding me, but time is short and I have more important people to speak to. So Melinda placed the neatly written, unsigned two-page letters on the dashboard of her car. She then grabbed her grandfather's shotgun, went inside the closet, placed the gun under her chin, and fatally shot herself. Melinda's family immediately blamed Nancy Grace for her suicide. Jerry Eubank, Melinda's father, told the Orlando Sentinel that Nancy Grace's interview destroyed his daughter. Melinda was tricked into appearing on the show by producers who told her they just wanted to help find the child, he said. She disintegrated. The show absolutely destroyed her, Eubank said. No question. Which, I mean, I can understand why he would say this. but Well, Nancy Grace is tough. Yes. I mean, of course, Melinda, Melinda no, nothing is lining up in her favor. So whether you know, she's innocent or guilty, she has no, nothing is pointing, you know, nothing's really in her, nothing's making her look good is what I'm trying to say. Right, yeah. Nancy Grace issued a statement by email. We feel a responsibility to bring attention to this case in hopes of helping find Trenton Duckett, who remains missing. Our goal in our continuing coverage of Trenton's disappearance is to enlist the public's help in finding him. Grace's statement read, While Miss Duckett's death is an extremely sad development, we remain hopeful that Trenton will be found safe and we will continue to cover the case until it is solved. A few days later, Nancy Grace appeared on Good Morning America to talk about the case. And here we have a clip of that. Thank you very much for joining us. I've known you a long time. You are a victim's advocate. I'm sure that you are very distressed by this. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, the focus is certainly not on me. And good morning. It's nice to see you, Chris. Long story short, Trenton Duckett still has not been found. And at this juncture, police are agreeing with me right now. They are now trying to search what we have now learned to be the most recent known whereabouts of Melinda Duckett just hours before Trenton Duckett went missing. What you just showed was the end of practically an hour long televised uh, broadcast there on Headline News where for an hour Melinda Duckett would not admit she would not take a polygraph, would not give police a timeline, and now police are trying to construct that without the help of Trenton's mother. And that's the whole question here, Nancy Grace. Do you feel responsible now that some of the information that could have helped police is gone forever with this mother? Do you feel that maybe your hardline stance may have made it more difficult to find this little boy? No, I don't. Uh, my interview followed hours and hours of police interrogation of Melinda Duckett. Uh, unfortunately, Melinda Duckett had attempted suicide in the past. In fact, I now learn, according to the Orlando Sentinel, that DFACS, the Department of Family and Children's Services, had actually taken the baby away from her and put him in foster care for four days. They were concerned how she would treat the child. His that family, may be soon, the Nancy husband's... Grace, but let me ask you this, because, you know, we, we have to be uh, respectful of both uh, of the situation here. Yes, maybe there were suicide attempts. Maybe you have the state action with the kids. But do you have any reason to believe that this woman did anything to her child? Well, you know what, Chris? I've handled a lot of murdered cases and missing children cases. And the first person you look at is the person last seen with the child. And she now admits to her attorney, her own lawyer has come forward and stated she grabbed a shotgun, a diaper bag, and the baby hours before he went missing and went on an eight-hour odyssey through Ocala National Forest for target practice. And that is exactly where police are searching today with cadaver dogs, Chris. So maybe uh, we can take a little dose of common sense and figure out where police are headed. But to suggest a uh, 15 to 20 minute interview caused someone to commit suicide, I feel is focusing on the wrong thing. Why do you think it happened? It should then? be focused. Why do you think it I happened, think Nancy it happened. Grace? After the interview, within 24 hours, it was a very difficult interview. There was a lot of stress. Do you feel any responsibility? I think it happened because Melinda Duckett may very well know where her son was. She even told her mother just before she killed herself, Trenton's not coming home, Mom. He's not coming home. How, Chris, would she have known that? If anything, I would suggest guilt caused her to commit suicide. And while I sympathize with her family and know as a firsthand victim of crime myself, you look for somebody to blame, anybody. And today the family is blaming me. 
and um, I hate what they're going through, but I would suggest their efforts go toward finding this baby. The idea of a journalist, an interviewer, and then being a judge or a jury, do you believe that that line has become a little bit blurred, that when you go after someone in an interview, maybe you're taking on a job that's not the job to have? Sir, I did not go after Melinda Duckett. Correction. Melinda Duckett refused to answer questions to either myself or police about her child's whereabouts. It is highly likely he is dead now because of that. Melinda's family would go on to sue Nancy Grace and CNN in a wrongful death suit, claiming that her aggressive questioning and verbal attacks drove Melinda to suicide. Grace later settled out of court with the family. Now, in late September, police released several documents pertaining to this case. Now, through these documents, we kind of find out and learn that investigators had become suspicious of Melinda Duckett on the night that Trenton had disappeared. So basically starting right from the get-go. From the get-go, yeah. A sworn statement from Leesburg Senior Detective Ian Thornton shows Melinda Duckett was clearing out the apartment, emptying the refrigerator as if she was moving from the residence. And police also sifted through the trash dump that night and found numerous articles relative to caring for a child, according to the statement. Those items included dry baby food, some candy, cookies, and other kids' snacks. Josh Duckett told the Orlando Sentinel that he was stunned to learn that she had thrown out the toddler's keepsake pictures. It strikes me as very odd. I mean, I've still got all my photos of him and all of my sonogram pictures from when she was pregnant, he said. I've had my suspicions from the start, but they're just suspicions. The Marion County Sheriff's Office announced in November that they would launch its own investigation into the disappearance of Trenton Duckett, this time, the focus being that little Trenton is still alive. Later, we learn that Melinda Duckett and her son Trenton pulled up to a Wendy's drive through in Bellevue in Marion County near the Ocala National Forest on the day the two-year-old went missing. Less than half an hour later, Duckett returned alone to the fast food restaurant to pick up chicken tenders, according to a Wendy's worker who served her both times. She likely returned a third time, hours later, again without the child, the Wendy's server told investigators. The Wendy's server passed a polygraph test, and her statements led investigators to suspect that Trenton may have been handed off to someone hours before Duckett reported him missing. If this was the case, it was likely she did it to keep Trenton away from his father, Josh, which, was, which is what I was just saying earlier. Yeah, exactly. The day after these news leads were announced, Nancy Grace appeared in Leesburg, Florida, pleading for more clues from the command center that was set up for Trenton. We hope that our visit here helps reinvigorate the search and lead to more leads, Grace said, before going on the air. The show covered newly announced leads and generated more speculation, but broke no new ground. It was kind of just a repetition of the same thing. Investigators later confirmed that a second witness saw Melinda and Trenton Duckett at the Bellevue Wendy's drive through hours before the boy disappeared. The second witness, a co-manager at the fast food restaurant, said she made faces with two-year-old Trenton when his mom pulled through the drive through around 11.15 a.m. on August 27th. This helps put together some of the timeline of Melinda and Trenton's whereabouts on that day. For a short period of time, investigators looked into the possibility that Trenton was taken out of the country. It's just a rock that we've got to turn over that hasn't been explored by us, Marion Sheriff Major Chris Blair told the Orlando Sentinel. Blair said detectives were working with the U.S. Customs and Border Protection and Interpol to determine if Trenton may have been taken to South Korea, where Trenton's mother, Melinda, was born. Investigators from the FBI the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, the State Attorney's Office, Lake County Sheriff's Office, Marion County Sheriff's Office, Orange County Sheriff's Office, Seminole County Sheriff's Office, Sumter County Sheriff's Office, Lady Lake Police Department, Leesburg Police Department, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, CART, Interpol, the U.S. Forest Service, Federal Aviation Admission, Team Adam, and other renowned agencies all worked tirelessly in this investigation, to no avail. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of organizations willing to help. Looking for this boy. Yeah. 
Well, you know that, but that, but that goes to show that if 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 you play, if you get the right people involved, as we learned with the Adam Walsh case, if the right people get involved, the media attention's there, and when the media attention happens, like Nancy Grace shows up, these are the things that occur. So as much as people hate her, when she shows up on a side or she talks about a case, it opens the eyes of everybody. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean that's a that's a massive list of assistance. Yeah, I mean when you get that kind of assistance, anything's at your disposal, pretty much. So I kind of <clears throat> want to rewind real quick because there was something that I found after we we finished with this research, and it just recently came to my attention. About the day that the day of the of day the of yes, uh, there was somebody had put together a map with her cell phone pings, and it looks like she goes, she starts in Leesburg at, at where she lives, and it looks like she goes all the way north to Ocala. And that that's near the state forest. And then she goes back down, and she gets up there around. So okay, so she leaves Leesburg at ten forty nine a.m. She gets all the way up to Acala near the state forest by twelve o four p.m. The Wendy's sighting is at oh, before she gets to the forest at eleven thirty. Then she comes back south. And even further south, like almost, she goes into Orlando. She goes all the way into like the heart of Orlando. And then she goes back up north. And it looks like arriving home around 3.53 p.m. Now, is this something you can post to our social media? Yes, I am going to post. I am going to post this map. And it's probably making absolutely no sense to our listeners right now. They have to look at it. But I am going to post this and a few other documents that I found um, on our social media. And, and there was one correction that I would like to make because I, I, may, I know I mentioned earlier about the Amber Alert. It wasn't issued that day immediately. It was the next day. Okay. Um, that was my mistake on that because that was we introduced that later. So since we're making corrections and adding new stuff, I want to make a correction on that. It was the Amber Alert was the next day. Okay. So now, now almost a year later, after Trenton went missing in August of 2007, the Leesburg Sheriff's Office announced that they had come up with basically ruling out two theories. Trenton was not abducted, and his mother did not hand him off to anyone. And instead, the evidence authorities collected since his disappearance led to conclude that Melinda staged the abduction before killing herself 12 days later. And the police department of Leesburg Major Steve Rockefeller said, one theory Leesburg police said they have not ruled out is the possibility that Melinda Duckett killed her child. And I'm, I'm leaning towards this. But I'm 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 not sure of the motive of that. Well, I mean, I understand I don't understand the motive. Now, like in Casey Anthony kind of thing, it's kind of the same scenario. I didn't understand the motive in that either. Well, it's almost as if the way that I'm looking at it as a mother, and I cannot for any reason that I could ever even think of imagine hurting my own child, but. In this case, and from what we do know, and we know her background with possibly some mental illness and a lot of manipulation, uh, I've heard some people refer to her as a sociopath, and it's obvious that she went to Great Lakes to keep Trenton away from his father, Josh. Yes. So the only thing that I could think of is... You know that theory, like, if I can't have you, no one can. Sometimes a husband will kill the wife. Or I'm I'm thinking along those lines. If she did kill her child, it would be one of those things that she would rather have the child dead than give him up to the father. Yeah, and everything... Which is fucked up. It is. And I got... I, now, I know that if... if here's, here's two things, and then people can depict, you know, kind of pick this apart if you choose, because that's what they do. But... If you look at like the suicide note and, and the note she left, she always spoke about Trenton in current terms. He, she, she didn't refer to him in past tense. Whereas in the interview that Joshua Duckett did on news media and things like that, 
a couple times he referred he referred to Trenton in the past tense. And what I mean by that is, and I get it because he wasn't able to see him, and so he got he got kind of ridiculed in the media um, and on Reddit, of course, because he kept referring to Trenton in the past tense, and he never really got to see him much. So it wasn't like he, because remember she was keeping him away. So he was like, yeah, he was always this way, and which which in his mind he would think that way because it's like when he came and visit me, but then he would leave. So everything that he remembered about Trenton was in past tense. And he never defended himself that way, but I'm going to defend him that way because I don't, I've done a lot of research on that guy and I'm not really seeing anything, anything that he may have done at that time. Well, and then another thing to look at is if she had passed him off to someone else, which was one of the theories, why would she kill herself? Yeah. The only reason I could picture her and and some people have said that she killed herself because after the Nancy Grace she w- she wasn't being portrayed as the victim anymore. She was, you know, in the public opinion, she wasn't the victim, and she wanted that. She had that victim mentality. She wanted that victim status. But I just can't imagine if your child was still alive and you hadn't done anything to him, and he was missing. Why would you kill yourself? Yeah. No matter what Nancy Grace said to you. Exactly. Because no matter you, what the public yeah. thought of you. You would want to be there because you want to be the first one to find him. Yes. You want to be there to push everyone to look for him. I, I see exactly what you're saying there. That makes like, perfect sense. The only reason I could think that a reasonable person, or if you can even call it that, would commit suicide is if they already knew that their child was dead. I would agree with you on that. Because if my child was just missing, I would never stop Looking. until I found her. So, okay, now that we've gone off on that tangent. We tend to do that occasionally. In the years that followed, investigators say that the leads dried up. Leesburg Sheriff saying that they hadn't received any viable leads since Melinda's suicide. The psychics came out of the woodwork, of Imagine course. Imagine that. One psychic named Maggie Giano, who called the sheriff's office and claimed that she had found Trenton's body. Deputies responded to Giano's summons, noticed a pile of children's clothes topped by a piece of what appeared to be a blue blanket, so they searched. The blue turned out to be that of a shirt, and a cadaver dog brought to the scene found nothing. Sheriff Gary Borders said his new officers searched where Giano claimed Trenton was buried because of the clothes they saw, not because of her tip. He said they talked with detectives about whether to charge her with filing a false police report, but decided that they couldn't show she intentionally did so. She genuinely believed that the child was buried on the property. <laughs> you, <clears throat> I, now, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I understand if you want to call in a psychic to get some kind of, you know, uh, maybe to get some. I, I, there are some scenarios where I've seen psychics maybe... I don't know. They, they can kind of direct you a certain way. Sylvia that, Brown. Yeah, exactly. I think she's full of caca. Really? But anyway, so I'm saying is it just, I, I don't know. When you're bringing psychics in, now you're really just reaching for straws. You're better off to just conclude with something and go with that. So um, the, I just get frustrated because I'm, I don't know. We'll talk about it in a minute, maybe. Now, in 2015, that's nine years after his appearance, the NCIC put out a new age progression photo of Trenton and what he would look like at age 11. And another age progression photo was released in 2017. Are we going to post those? Can we post yes. those? Okay. Yes, we will. All right. We'll post those for everyone to see. Now, every year, Josh Duckett and his family hold a candlelight vigil outside City Hall in Leesburg. This year, about 30 people attended the vigil. Josh Duckett told the Orlando Sentinel, it's been 13 years and we're still pushing to get answers. Though authorities have said they believe Trenton is likely dead, his father Josh said he continues to hold out hope his son, who would now be 15, will be returned. As far as Melinda is concerned, I really do think she killed herself because she was no longer the victim and she still just didn't want Josh to have him. Leesburg Police Captain Steve Rockefeller said in a statement to News 13 Florida in 2015, which is basically what I just said. Exactly. And I posed the question again, could a mother really kill her child just to keep him away from the father? 
I, yeah. I think I think it's I, possible yeah. for a very mentally disturbed person to do that. Well, we have seen, and anyone obviously that's in this that in in the true crime genre, you see a lot of this stuff when it comes to family members and things. But if you look at women when they fight, they when a when a woman or a man in some case, it's like you can't have him if I can't have him. You know, I mean, you, you, you if you can't be. I don't want to share. You don't understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Yeah. So in other words, I've seen that, and then they do take these drastic measures where... Well, and I did work in family law for a period of time, and I can say that divorce and child custody brings out the absolute worst in people. Yes. I mean, the absolute nasty nastiness that's buried deep down inside of people will come out. Yeah, because a parent in those situations, the parent doesn't care about their kid very much. They do when they start to get divorced suddenly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yep. So now, could Trenton still be alive somewhere? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think if he was alive, they would have found him. I personally, after what I've read, researched, and I, I want to say I want to use the word investigated, but I don't, I, I use that loosely. Um, I guess because research, investigation, kind of the same the way we do it. I think. Why Melinda killed herself leans more towards Trenton being dead. I think maybe she did kill him. I don't know if it was on purpose, mistake. Again, I relate this kind of Casey Anthony, that same scenario, except Casey Anthony has no heart or feelings. Well, Whereas I don't think Mo Melinda Duckett really did either. Well, I think maybe uh, because, she, she and, felt and a track of guilt, guilt, though. What, what I mentioned in the beginning when I said that these things may or may not you know, have anything to do with Trenton's disappearance. But the fact that she made pornographic videos of herself and was selling them to a website, that doesn't show a very high self-esteem or sense of respect for herself. And... The fact that police found naked photos of her and and videos in which a crying baby can be heard in the background. So she's making porn with her son in the house, and instead of tending to her son, she's making porn. Now and then she was also being investigated for embezzling thousands of dollars for a bank where she worked. So we're dealing with somebody who has very low morals. Very low integrity. Yeah, but I mean, you as a as a, as a parent would understand that if if you were to get to a point where you killed or caused bodily harm to your child, it it would mentally mess you up. Oh yeah, to the point where maybe you would kill yourself. I mean, is that are we agreeing on that? Is that where are you? Because um, we're not dealing with, like you said, we're not. I, I agree, we're not dealing with anyone that's stable. One thing I will say, as I will go on record, is I don't think Joshua had anything to do with this. I don't think so either. I think that he himself too is a victim in this. Yes, as well I as agree. Trenton, obviously being the majority of the victim, of course. Um, but I think Joshua was a big victim in this because the child was kind of kept from him. I because there was she maliciously went after him with the MySpace thing and tried to. She tried to get him to, to not be able to see Trenton, to get custody revoked, and to basically keep him away. Mm -hmm. And then, so now he can't see his child, and then this all occurs. You know, Trenton obviously ends up missing, and he still can't see his child. Right. So I find him to be a, a victim in this as well. In doing some of the research I have on his background and things, it, it hasn't been easy for him. He's had to change himself all over. I mean, this media attention... Uh, like after he did TV interviews and things, I mean his is is all of his social medias and all the stuff changed. It's not even his name anymore, so he mm -hmm. had to basically hide from the public. Yeah, which is probably not. I, I would never want to do it, and I can't imagine it's easy or fun to do. You know, because now you have to you have to explain that to people, and I think that that's unfair too. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, any other thoughts you have on this particular case other than I think she, she went straight up Casey Anthony on this? No, I just think it's a sad, sad thing. And I don't think that 
Trenton's going to be found. You think, you think that she, she, she killed him? That would be what I would think at this point, yes. Yeah, I would lean more towards that, sadly. Unfortunately. I mean, obviously, you don't want to ever give up hope. But it's another thing I don't think we're ever really going to know unless yeah. somebody finds his body. Yeah. Well, like we spoke about before, don't ever give up hope. Yes, you know. that's true. Some kind of closure would be nice, whether you find Trenton alive, that he was handed off to some family and renamed, and somehow he gets a vivid memory of, hey, this this was me at this time. Or if he just, if they find his body, at least it can bring some kind of closure to this whole situation. Yeah, and real sad, quick, sad case. speaking of not giving up hope, I just want to throw this out there that a new Instagram page just popped up today. Uh, the name of the page is Justice for Kyle Burtis. And anyone who knows us knows that we're pretty passionate about that case. So if you're on Instagram, go ahead and give that give that page a follow. And uh, keep in touch on that. Yeah, I'd really like to get that. You know, get the word out. Keep spreading the word on that one. Absolutely. So. I think that's it Okay, for tonight. Um, that's all we're going to do for tonight, folks. Again, if you'd like to support the show, please subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com backslash Paradise After Dark podcast. And check out our Etsy store for some awesome Paradise After Dark t-shirts. Make sure to follow us on social media at Paradise After Dark podcast on Instagram and Facebook and at Paradise Dark 239 on Twitter. You can also email us at paradiseafterdarkpodcast at gmail.com. All right, and feel free to visit our website at paradiseafterdark.com for our latest episodes, links to the social media that Lauren was speaking of, our Etsy store, and a cool little donate button that's on there if you just want to help out the show. Also, I believe there's a link to Patreon there. Yep, and please rate us five stars and give us a review on Apple Podcast if that is the platform you're listening on. And our listenership is growing and growing, and we really appreciate it. So thank you, everyone, for listening. <laughs> to Paradise After Dark. Dark, 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 dark.